Statistics and Excel, Chuck Luck example part number two. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Because you know, like in the future, the politicians will have like artificial intelligence lying machines, which will 10x their lies all over the place. And we're going to need statistics and the data within Excel so it can help us to populate and make sense of the data so we can somehow still be grounded in some kind of truth out there, even with the 10x lies from the politicians. And data is what we do. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. And Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point, just build in the tables as we go from here, or just look at this from a theory standpoint about probability statistics or the game of Chuckaluck or Sick Bow in general. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and will be continuing with the blank part of the worksheet this time so we can practice our Excel tools, Excel formatting as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we have done and where we will be going. We're looking at the game of Chuckaluck, sometimes called Sick Bow, which is a game of chance often found in, say, casinos, for example. Remembering that we're focusing in on probability and games of chance because they're based on and constructed out of probability our great tools for testing, and that's what we're going to focus on here. So if you like the games, that's great. If you don't like games of chance, but are interested in probability for broader purposes, possibly related to statistics, you still want to learn the stuff because it's a good place to get the concepts down. Once down, we can then apply them to more broader areas within uh, statistics, which are relevant in many different areas and disciplines. Okay, so the general idea with Chuckaluck is that we're going to have uh, the three dice and we're betting on basically our number from the three dice. And we, because there are three dice, there's kind of a few different ways that we could win. We can have one dice that comes out uh, on our number out of the three or two dice or three dice. That's what we analyzed last time. I'll continue with that in a second. Remember that the practice tab has pre-formatted cells, so you can practice the practice problem with less formatting, just filling out the blue area. The blank tab, let's continue, is where we're going to continue here. Let's give a recap of what we have done. So we first are saying, okay, if we have three dice that we're rolling, and we're trying to analyze the, the expected value, we can map out and break down each component into its component parts. So we said, all right, if we if we choose a number, we're picking number four, and we roll the dice, either we get zero fours, in which case, obviously, they take our dollar, or we're going to get one of our number, which has a payout of one to one. So if we put one dollar down and we get one out of three fours in the dice roll, then they give us a dollar on top of our dollar. We take the two dollars back, one being the dollar we put down, the other being the winning. Obviously, we could also put, you know, two dollars down, in which case, if we won, they would put two dollars on top of our original two dollars, right? And it would be a one for one. And then we could get two of our numbers come up. If we choose four, two out of the three dice come up as a four, in which case we get more of a payout, the payout now being two to one. So if we put one dollar down, they put two dollars on top of that. And we take that if we uh, 
if we don't get any fours, then they take our dollar, right? And then we're going to say, well, what happens if we get three uh, of our number, which we're going to say is four? Well, then they're going to pay us three to one. If we put one dollar down, they put three dollars on top. Then we're going to say, okay, how can we analyze this? Because it's not like a flipping a coin situation where there's one out of so many chances to win, or even in the situation where we analyzed the roulette wheel, where each of those se separate things we could bet on, we can basically say, well, there's one chance out of so many chances to win. In this case, we have three chances to win on one roll. We can break it out and try to piece it out and, and figure it out. So we can say, all right, well, what's the odds that we have three of your number? So we have three different dice that are independent to get three, which is very unlikely, right? You'd have to get one six chance, one out of six out of one dice, one out of six on the second dice, one out of six on the third dice, which comes out to 16.67%, which if I multiply those three chances together, comes out with 0.46. So very low odds that we get all three dice to be our number which we're imagining is four here what if what's the odds that we get zero out of four we lose completely we don't get any of the of the dice hitting our number well that has a five six chance for each dice because there's five numbers that are not our number all independent if i multiply that together we get a 57.87 percent chance that we lose completely and then we have the more complex scenarios because there's more than one way to get there. For example, what are the odds that I get one number out of the uh, out of the three dice to hit our number? Well, there's three combos. I can have the red dice hit our number. The orange and blue dice do not, which if I multiply those together, is at 11.57%. Or I can have the red dice not hit our number orange dice doesn't hit our number but the blue dice does which again is 11.57 and we could of course have the orange dice hit our number the red dice doesn't the blue dice doesn't which gives us a a, a 11.57 if i add those three up we get to 37.72 what are the odds that we have two that hit our number again we have a couple combinations we could have the red and orange both hit our number which happens at a 1616 chance and the last one doesn't hit our number, which happens at a 5-6 chance, adding no, or taking the product to 31. I could have the red and the blue hit our number, 1616. The orange does not, which also comes out to 2.31, of course. And we could have the orange and the blue hit our number, but the red does not, which comes out to 2.31. And if I add those up, it comes out to 694. All right, so if we put all the pieces together and try to think about our expected value, if we roll the dice and we get, what are the odds to get zero of them at our number? Well, uh, the, the payout is going to be negative dollars because we lose and the odds are 57.87%. Uh, so our expected value, we said if we multiply those out, is 0.5787. Uh, but what are the odds to get one number? We said 37.72. We're going to get a payout of $1. So here's the pers the decimal. If we get two of our numbers, we get a payout of $2. So that means uh, the odds of that happening are 694. Here's our decimal. And then to get three of our number, we get a payout of $3. And here's the likelihood that it happens. So the expected value, if I multiply that out, is this. And we can see that if I sum up all the pieces that we put together, it comes out to 100%, which means that we've analyzed all of the different uh, options properly. And so that's our check figure. And that means that on average, we expect to lose about $0.0787, or in other words, 7.87 cents per roll, which doesn't make a lot of sense on one roll because we have no idea what's going to happen in one roll. But if we played this game over and over and over again, we would expect on average to lose about seven seven cents, 7.87 cents. Now let's test that empirically. Let's kind of see how can I simulate this game multiple times in uh, Excel and see if that if that number makes any sense. All right, so let's make a skinny column. I'm going to make this skinny over here. 
home tab, clipboard, make a paintbrush, and make the skinny over here. So let's say that we're gonna say we run a test of the expected value. That's kind of like what we're doing here. We're gonna test this thing out and let's make this home tab font group, let's make that black and white. All right, and so then we're gonna have our count. So let's, let's say we played this game 500 times, that's been our example. So one, two, let's count that out to 500 times. We're gonna imagine this, we rolled this dice 500 times. That's gonna take forever. It, and it used to be, you know, if you worked at a college or something, then maybe you can get a staff job or something and you would get to in the statistics department and you just roll the dice, you know, 500 times and log in your results like a good scientist and whatnot. But now that job has been possibly replaced by Excel that does it a lot faster, which is sad, but convenient at the same time for us. So in any case, we're gonna say that we, we make those rules. And then we have our three dice, right? There's three dice. One is red. We say, well, let's just do an equals. This one will be easier. Equals the red, uh, the orange, and the blue. Red, orange, and the blue. All right, and so let's actually color code those so that we don't get them mixed up. We can put some colors on them. That's the red one. I'm gonna make this one orange. Orange, I use that orange because it's darker and I make the other side white so it, because I think it pops a little bit more than the black on the colors. And then let's go and center that home tab alignment and center. So now each dice has six sides to it. So I can do a random number generation for each of them, one out of six. So this is gonna equal random between, random between, bottom number's one, comma, top number is six. And it's just gonna randomly generate like throwing a dice, not as cool as throwing a, throwing a dice is kinda, kinda cooler than this, but this gives us the, the, the bottom line result. Let's go ahead and take these, drag it to the right, Notice it recalculates every time. That's fine, we're gonna roll with that. We're gonna use that to our advantage. Life keeps on changing on us, that's okay. I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use that to, to help us. And then I'm gonna double, I'm gonna select these and double click the fill handle, boom. Let's actually make the count black and white so I can have it, uh, make sure I don't mess up uh, and pick those up as, let's make that black and white this time. I think I should have been doing that that way the whole time because then it looks, then I don't confuse it with my actual numbers. I'm gonna make this small. And then let's check these out and go control shift down and let's make those the border blue. This is our data. The actual data is in blue. If you don't have that blue right there, that's the old Excel, it's fun blue. Standard, we're gonna be picking this one right here, boom. All right, now these are gonna recalculate every time. If you don't want them to recalculate, you could copy this whole thing and then paste it over here, right click and paste it one, two, three, giving us a static result that doesn't recalculate. But again, we're gonna work, we're gonna work with the recalculations as part of our, our thing, not letting it throw us off and have that worked into our system here. Okay, so there's the dice rules. Let's make a skinny AL. I'm gonna take this skinny column and go home tab, paintbrush, make a skinny AL. All right, and so then let's do our buckets. So we'll do our buckets and we'll do a frequency calculation. Oh, hold on, wait a second, hold on, hold on. Something ain't right here. Let's, I'm gonna undo this, undo. Let's, let's say we do our count column now. This is gonna be the count column. And what I'd like to do is these are my three rules of my red, orange, and blue each time. And I'm going to count and say, let's say we pick the number four as our winning number. And so we're going to use four as our winning number all the way across. Let's make that blue. That's my data input. The blue and uh, back to black. I'm sorry. I'm kind of, all right, a little undecisive with my formatting. Usually I'm, I'm going to make this black and white and then center. Okay. So now let's do a count and say for these three numbers, I wanna count the number fours. Equals count, I just need one count, not a count if, just count, uh, I'm sorry, not an ifs with an S, count if singular tab. 
and the range is going to be these three numbers. As I copy them down, the range is going to move down. Therefore, no absolute references, comma. What's the criteria? I want it to be a four. Find the fours. That four, I'm pulling from this cell instead of typing it in, otherwise known as hard coding it. Therefore, I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute dollar sign before the letter and the number. So when I copy it down, it's telling Excel, don't move that cell down, but do move these cells down. Okay. And Excel's like, okay, I gotcha. So then that, at, that added up one four. Let's copy it down and see if it does what we think it should. Copy it down. Roger that. Roger out. So this one had two fours. This one had no fours, no fours, no fours, no fours, one four, one four, one four, right? So it looks like it's doing what it should. Let's go control shift down and make that blue bordered as well. Bordered and blue. All right. Okay. Now let's do our bucket thing that I was trying to do before I got ahead of myself. Don't get ahead of yourself. That's what I have to tell myself. Home tab paintbrush, but it pisses me off because I'm so slow. I hate waiting for myself. I hate it, but you don't want to get ahead of yourself. You have to wait for yourself. This is going to be buckets count and then percent here. We'll use a frequency count and then we'll do the same thing with a count formula shortly. Let's go to the home tab font group, make this black, white, and then center. And then let's put our buckets in there. So we want to have the thing to be ending at zero. We want to count the zeros, the ones, the twos, the threes, and then everything over three, which is just going to be our kind of check figure because we're going to use a spill array formula because we're fancy. We're fancy here. So we're going to be using uh, the spill array of frequency, a fancy frequency spill formula equals frequency. Boom. The frequency. Let's take our data array, which is going to be the count column. I'm going to say control shift down to get back up. I'm going to say control backspace. I'm, I'm saying that as I type it on the keyboard and then that's going to be it. And then I'm going to say comma and we're going to pick up the bends, which are just zero through three. And then it's going to spill over to the over and we'll say, okay, boom. So now we've got this many zeros that came up, this many uh, uh, ones, this many twos, this many threes. Let's total it up. That'll give me some double check that we got things right because how many should there be? There should be 500. We did this 500 times. If you recall, you got to know that number so we can get our double check here. Let's sum it up. 500. Yes, indeedy. Let's take a look at the percentages of zeros, ones, two, and threes compared to the 500. These are the these are the, the kind of mirroring what we think what we would think would be the likelihoods. So we're saying it came out 281 divided by 500, and so we're going to say that's going to be uh, F4 on the keyboard, F4 because I want this one not to move down. I do want this one to move down because the next cell when I copy it down should be 176 or whatever it changes to divided by 500. Okay. Let's make that a percentify number group, percentify to recognize, and then add some, some decimals and then copy it down. Copy it down, roger that. And then we'll sum it up, alt equals, that's the easiest way to do the sum formula. Home tab number group, percentify to recognize, add some decimals so it lines up properly. And then this is what the expected percent or let's just call it the odds that we calculated. Duh, duh, duh. And let's say, okay, we calculated that to get zero, we calculated over here, I'm just gonna say equals. And we said the odds of getting no number, uh, no, none of our numbers was one, five, six, five, six, five, six, three dice. All of them have a five, six chance. Multiplying that together, we estimated at uh, odds of 5787. So we're going to say let's add percent to recognize and this will be the difference. And difference and let's going to say this is going to be equal this minus this. Let's just make this a decimal so that we can see it flipping uh, po positive and negative. Let's go ahead and format paint this one over to there so we have our difference 
All right, and then on the one, we calculated the odds to be, what's the odds that it comes out one? Well, it could happen that you have, for each dice could have a one, six, five, six, five, six, or one, six, five, six, five, six, and one, six, five, six, five, six, which all three of those come out to 1157. If I add those three together, that's where we came up with this 3772, okay? And so let's go ahead and percentify that one here. I actually have them over here. Why am I going way over there? I have them right here too. The odds are right here. I already, already I'm, it's right there. Boom, let's pick that one up. Percentify to recognize. And then this one, uh, 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 is that, okay. Percentify to recognize. And it did. And this one is, of course, just zero because that's just our spill. We don't have anything over that. And then if I copy this down, boop, 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 there's our differences. Let's sum up the differences for the fun of it. Boom, comes out to zero. All right, that makes me feel like everything's lining up properly. And then if I sum up once again our odds, that should come up to 100%. Boom 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 so here's our differences uh so it looks like looks like the actual fact is lining up odds wise pretty close to what we had expected what about expected value wise let's check that out let's put some before don't get ahead of yourself don't get ahead of yourself let's format the table you got to make it look nice or people will will tune out they don't like looking at unformatted things Okay, so we'll format that. All right, let's make this a little tighter. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, so then let's say this is going to be the expected value. So, and let's make that uh, black and white for the header home tab font group black and white. And we'll call this expected value per role. So, per role. We calculated this to be, I'm going to say equals, uh, and we calculated that over here. And we, what we did is we took our odds times the payout, which I explained a little bit earlier. And we, we came out to the idea that we're going to come out to, on average, 0 0.0787 or 7.87 cents per roll that we lose every time. So I'm going to say, and we don't lose that amount every time, but on average, that's what we expect to lose over time. So let's go ahead, we'll take it out to there. Okay, and so how many rolls did we have? We had 500 rolls, I'll just say equals that many rolls. And that means the expected value, which if it was from investing terms, our expected return, which will be negative here, of course, because we're in a casino. So it's gonna be equal to this times this. So $39, if we did it 500 times, we'd expect to lose on average 39.35 on average, right? So let's see if that is what actually happens if we play out the actual thing here. Let's go ahead and say borders blue. Is that what actually happens? Let's put our table down here. So we could have, let's map this out. We have losses. I'm gonna put my headers or wins is what we can have to lose. Uh, we, we have to have zero of our number come up, zero fours in our case. To win, we can have a one. We can have one out of the three dice. We can have two out of the three dice hit a four. We can have three out of the three dice hit a four. Three ways to win. It's How can you not want to play this game? Three ways to win, people. All right. Let's go ahead and center this winning thing over the center because I'm going to format paint this practice or formatting here, and I'm going to align it horizontally. Now, by the way, most people will do it this way by going here and then say they want to merge the cells. I don't like that though, because then it makes my columns messed up, right? So I like doing it this way by selecting what I want to merge over. But instead of merging the cells together, I just want to center across the cells by right clicking it and going to once again, formatting the cells and then in alignment, I want to make it uh, uh, center across the selection. See, and then I don't mess up. See, see, now this is still a column. It didn't like, right? 
it's way better in a lot of cases, I believe. All right, so then I can make this make this green for the winning color. I'll make this green for winning. Uh, we'll say that's going to be green and then white. And then these are the losses. Loser. I'm not a loser. I'm not a loser. I don't even... Losing is... is I'm just winning impaired, okay? I'm not a loser. I'm just winning. I'm winning impaired. I'm going to make this black and white home tab font group. I think I think winnings for losers. That's what I think winnings for wait a sec. That doesn't make sense. Winnings for anyway, it's whatever, dude. Let's just go ahead and then then I'm going to say let's do our count thing here. And so I'm looking to count. So now I could just say this equals we already did the count up top, but I did this with a frequency thing. We can also do like a count. So I'd like to count all of the columns that are zeros just to practice that formula so it'd be equals count if that's the other way we can do this instead of a frequency distribution i could just say here's the column count if control shift down control backspace and then comma count if it's that zero right i'm just going to use that as the zero so count if it's a zero comes out to 297 which should match that 297 it does let's do it again we could copy this across by the way but i'm going to practice the count ifs formula i'm going to say this is going to be equal to this control shift down control backspace comma if it's a one and so there's 175 matches the 175 let's do it again ultra vase por favor count if we're going to say do, 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 do this column, control shift down, control backspace, comma. If it's a two, that 34 matches that 34. Ultra vase one more time, last time. We're going to say count if. Do, 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 do. Make sure you enjoy this one because it's the last one. Control shift down, control backspace. And then comma for the criteria, the three, boom, it should be a four. There's the four. Now, obviously I could copy this across. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do the copying across. I'm gonna delete these and say, couldn't I copy that formula across? We could, but to do that, I want these numbers to move across, but not, not the range. So I wanna put my cursor in the range and say F4 on the keyboard, F4, and then F4. I hate fours. F4s, man. F4s. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. But that puts the dollar sign before the letter and the number telling Excel not to move these numbers to the right, but not on this one because these numbers I, these numbers up top, we do want to move. So I can say, put my cursor on that, fill handle it to the right, and it should still be good. It should still be good. Okay, let's put in our payout now. Our payout if uh if we get zero it's it's we lose a dollar if we get none of our numbers if we uh if we win we're going to earn a dollar uh if we get i'm sorry if we get one out of our three dice hitting our number which we're assuming is a four we get one dollar if we get two of our dice hitting that four we're going to say we get two dollars on the payout and if three of the dice come up to hit our number which we're assuming is a four we get three dollars so that would be our payout. Let's put a total over here. So we could total this bad doggy up. We're going to go home tab, font group, and center it. All right, let's total these up. That should eat up the 500 again. That's our 500. That's our double check, just like it was here. And then we're going to say this is going to be then our total. We're going to get equals... We lose this many times times minus one dollar, but then we won this many times. This is our winnings times this dollar. So I won, look at this. I won like three out of four times. I'm totally like a winner in total because I won the three, because there's three ways I win versus the one. And then we'll sum up this this way. And then, okay, so that comes out to this total and we can compare that to that one so it's pretty close this is going to be the diff difference between what we expected our expected value to be this and this is what we actually lost after 500 rules at the chuckle look so obviously the question here is 
can you get them to give you enough free stuff like drinks or whatever you're into uh, to pay for the fact that it costs you, you know, thirty-five dollars to sit there and hang out and give and at the chuckle luck for you know however many times it takes to spin the the dice five hundred times, right? That's so that's the calculation you have to get to. So you're hanging at the table, you're trying to spend those measly one dollars bets and still have them comp your room or something and uh, and give you free drinks or whatever you can whatever right and that's so then we're going to say okay there we have it now if i double click on this multiple times it should be sometimes positive and sometimes negative right and so that looks like it is let's go ahead and review spelling the checking check in the spelling looks muy b to the n we're not just being man we're muy being so that's it